Got to say Blake Warren. Um, very physical running back. Um, a guy I've played against since high school, Baltimore. Um, he's a VA kid, but I think Baltimore raised him. So he's definitely a guy that he, he runs hard. Um, and you got to bring your heart out every time you play him. Kurt, you mentioned Dom DeLuca. He obviously came in as a walk-on, played a lot of special teams, got a scholarship, and then this year played a lot of linebacker. What is it? What was it like for you, kind of just watching him grow into the player that he is? Yeah, I got to see him from the start, um, just coming in with the hunger to get better. Um, that's that's how it started. Um, just coming in, asking a bunch of questions, um, just trying to get better every single day, improving this process, um, and attacking every day like it's a game. And I think that's the mentality that Penn State instills into you. But he just took it to another level. As far as yourself personally, um, how would you say your Shrine Bowl went and what did you kind of take out of that experience? Yeah, um, I thought it went very well. Uh, I feel like I had a really good week, um, learned a lot, got to play a couple different positions, played a little bit of mic, which I hadn't played before, but I, I thought I did a really good job and I was really um, thankful for what I learned. Um, we had a bunch of great coaches um, just really instilling good habits into us, instilling good things to take on to the next level, um, and I'm really thankful for that experience. Growing up in Owings Mills, how much did you watch Ravens, attend Ravens games or events? Well, I actually, I grew up in Glen Burnie, Maryland, so it was, I'm like five minutes away from MT Bank Stadium, so my mother's a big Ravens fan. Um, I grew up watching them all the time. Um, really love seeing guys on that defense like Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, um, Terrell Suggs just legendary guys um, and when you see guys like that and what they can do for the community um, what they've done for that area um, it really leaves an impact on you. This year they made some defensive history what did you take away from any games that you watched? Mm -hmm. uh, I just I like the physicality they played with on defense um, they definitely had a mentality um, that when they got to the ball they were going to punish you um, and I really appreciate that as a defensive guy, um, especially playing in a place like Penn State. We take defense seriously as well. So that's definitely something I respect, and I really I really like what I saw from him. Have you talked to or learned from Odafe in any way? Uh, yeah, I've seen him. Uh, we're signed to the same agency, so um, when I get to talk to him, we, we definitely talk things to him. Um, but I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while. Just curious, you got a favorite Olaf Shanu story from y'all's time together? Um, I just think the, the biggest thing about Olu is how he approached freshman year. Um, obviously being in a position where he wasn't able to play as much, um, he really took that B-squad role to a different level. Um, uh, a lot of people, they would have gotten that role, they would have pouted, they would have transferred. Um, nah, he attacked it every day. He's coming to practice, taking B-squad reps against Odafe every day and just getting better. And I think that's definitely something guys can look to for when they're in that position, uh, especially in this new age of college football. Um, I think his story is definitely definitely one of the good ones. Uh, did that progress surprise you at all, or did you kind of see it from no. the beginning? No, it didn't surprise me at all. Uh, I knew what type of player he was. Um, another Maryland guy that I've seen um, playing since high school. So I knew the type of talent. Um, I just knew he just had to get on the field. And, just him being able to get that work against some of the best D linemen in the country every day, that only made him better. Ab Abdul Carter just got moved uh, to defensive end. Uh, what can we expect to see from him at that position? I think you can expect to see a lot of explosiveness, um, a lot of quarterbacks being sacked. Uh, that's just something he's worked. Um, I feel like he's earned that right to be able to make that position change. Um, and I think he's going to be dominant at it. He, he's the type of guy when he gets put in a position, whether whether he's good at it or not, he's going to keep working until he is. And I think that's definitely going to be something that something that he's going to dominate. At. Was that a change you saw coming? Uh, yes. Um, we obviously had our Prowler package. So we both got experience playing a little bit of D-line, um, being up on the line, making plays. I think it's just going to give him more of an opportunity for the plays to be called for him, um, for him to be able to get after the quarterback. You mentioned guys being Baltimore, made or Maryland. But do you feel like DMV football is growing, kind of getting more attention? I'm a little biased. I think DMV football is some of the best in the country. Uh, obviously, you got places like Georgia, Florida, California, but DMV is just everyone wants to recruit there, and it's, it's for a reason. Uh, I feel like DMV football is one of the upper echelon, if not 
if not top three, then top five. Um, it's just we breed dogs, whether it's Baltimore, um, whether it's Northern Virginia, whether it's D.C. It's, it's a bunch of guys that just they're hungry um, and they want to win. I think that's the mentality that most Maryland and Northern Virginia guys bring. Is there a player in the NFL who you model your game after, who you kind of looked at and studied over the years? There's been a couple yeah, guys. Um, in, the past, in the recent yeah, years, the I've been really looking at Roquan Smith and um, Fred Warner. Um, both of those guys, they're incredible in coverage. Um, really sideline to sideline guys. And that's really just effort to the ball. But they, they know what they're doing all the time. And you can tell that before every game, they have a different process with how they prepare. Uh, how they do things. That's definitely something I want to ask those guys um, about the preparation, how they approach games. Um, and then elite pass rushers. Uh, I feel like that's a way you can add value to your game, uh, especially in this day and age. So guys like Michael Parsons, um, just guys that can get off the ball and get to the quarterback, you, you add that process to your game, you add that skill to your game, and you can really make yourself um, last in this league. Do you feel like Roquan has changed the way that the position is played? I think he is. You know, both of those guys really um, just really showing how you don't have to be the big, bulky backer anymore. Um, you can be an athlete. And I think that's really paving the way for a lot of us to be able to get our foot in the door and make plays. How has this whole pre-draft process been for you? What have you learned just in general and about yourself? Um, I've learned a lot. It's it's been it's definitely been different than what I expected. Um, they don't they don't show the grind of it on TV. Um, they just show this, you know, uh, we'll be doing the workout. But just the day-to-day -day processes, um, I just learned. I'm, I'm the type of guy I'm always trying to uh, improve my day-to-day -day process. Uh, I think how you approach every day is how you're going to approach the Super Bowl. So you have to just be able to lock in every day, you know, focus on the skill you want to get better at, and keep attacking it until you get better at it. And then even when you think it's perfect, continue to find ways to get better. So that's just how I've been approaching this process. And that's how I feel like I'm going to approach every day. What's the best piece of advice you've gotten throughout this process? And who did that come from? Yeah, um, I got to say, kid, yeah, I mean, like uh, I said, my trainer, I my my body. Um, just, just being about being smart with your money. Um, I know that's going to be a big point of emphasis for me coming into the league. Um, I've never seen this type of money before. So just being able to make a budget and, and be smart with it. Um, and not spend it on frivolous things. Like, I'm a guy, I like shoes, so I definitely have to be able to manage that. You mentioned the stuff. Did NAL teach you anything that way, or did it impact you that much? Uh, it taught me a little bit. Um, I definitely I definitely spent a lot of it on shoes, but um, it definitely taught me how to kind of start that process. Um, Penn State was really good with their their NIL programs. Um, I feel like NIL taught me the lesson of connections. Um, I feel like connections are the biggest thing, uh, especially in that that program. I was able to meet a lot of a lot of people, um, a lot of people that were really big in the state of Pennsylvania, and I feel like that's been really helpful. Favorite pair of shoes? Favorite pair of shoes? Um, I gotta say my off white. Air Force Ones. I have the, the blue pair and the yellow pair. Uh, I, I wear those things every day if I get to. You, you mentioned the stuff we the, the stuff we don't see. How has your off-season training been, and what areas have you kind of emphasized uh, working on uh, for yourself and preparing in the off-season? Yeah, um, I definitely wanted to add a little bit more bulk, um, get a little stronger. Um, I feel like that's an area that you can always improve in, um, just being able to be physical with your strike. Um, and then I wanted to improve my speed. Uh, that's I feel like that's why everyone goes to training, um, to be able to show what they can do on the biggest stage and show that you can really be an athlete. And I think as a linebacker, that's one of the most important things in this game. Uh, I have been with the Giants. How'd that go? It went really good. I'm actually a really big Giants fan uh, since I was a kid. Yeah, um, Brandon Jacobs. He actually he reached out to me a couple weeks ago, um, just gave me some encouraging words. Um, I told him the impact that he had on me. Um, he was incredibly thankful, um, and I was incredibly thankful for that moment too. Um, it's, it's it's amazing when your heroes get to reach out to you and, and tell you that you're doing the right thing and they're proud of you. Have you met with Buccaneers? I have. I think I've met with pretty much every team. Um, 
it's been a really good process. Um, it's kind of quick, like you got a bunch of meetings, uh, just really talking things through. Um, you don't really, it doesn't hit you that you really just met with these guys until it's over. So uh, I feel like it's, it's been a really good process. Did you meet with the Steelers? Yeah, I think it was the only one. What are some of the things? Um, what are some of the things that you bring to an NFL franchise? And has the Bills been in contact? Uh, yeah, they, they have been, um, and I feel like it's been. I feel like my personal process. I just bring being a reliable guy. Um, everything that I do is with intention, um, and I feel like. I'm the type of guy that as soon as I step in the building, I'm going to do everything I can to take to pretty much get everyone's trust, um, players and coaches, because you need the, the players that are battling around with you. You need their trust just as much as you know, the coaches' trust. So I feel like that's going to be one of the most important things for me when I step into the building. Um, but I feel like that's going to set me apart. Did you meet with the Steelers, and was that formal or informal, if, if so? Yeah, I think I had multiple meetings with the Steelers. Um, they've, they've been really good. Um, I love the, the guys I've been with. You know, I love the type of vibe they have when you talk to them. Um, they're not kind of uptight. Usually a lot of the people you talk to are uptight, but they they kind of give you a kind of a loose, relaxed feel. Um, I feel like you can really talk to them and really talk ball with them. Oh. And I feel like it's been really good. Which were the guys that he met with? I can't remember the name. It's, it's a lot of people, but right. it's been it's been really good. Meeting with them. As somebody who like prides herself on coverage, like you said, wants to improve on speed and things like that this offseason. How does it change the way that you train when you have to train for specific drills like a forty that aren't necessarily football drills as much as they are athlete drills? Well, you're always working with athlete drills. Um, that's just something you keep keep to yourself. Always working footwork. Always working technique. Like me personally, I like to work my steps every day. You don't, you don't really like want to lose that. Um, being, a, being in a game setting and fall stepping and doing stuff like that because that translates to all the drills. But um, it's it's really nothing different. Um, I feel like we've been training for speed since the whole college days. That's kind of how Penn State works. So it's just a translation into specific 40 drills. Um, so. I feel like it's nothing I'm not used to. Um, it's just a little bit of change in technique. Curtis, have you been with the Cowboys this week? Yeah, I have. I was it informal? Uh, it was informal. Uh, what do you think about the Cowboys? And obviously, uh, Michael Parsons being from Penn State. How cool would it be to look at him? Yeah, I have tremendous respect for the Cowboys. Uh, they're obviously a legendary program. Um, program that's been around a long time, that's won a lot of games. Uh, so it's, it's tremendous respect. Um, Micah has nothing but great things to say about it. Um, constantly asking him questions, uh, picking his brain about how this process is going to go. Um, but I, I, I have tremendous respect for him. What, what are your former teammates, uh, Abdul Carter, is putting his hand in the ground now? Uh, how do you think he'll do in that transition? I think he'll do amazing. Uh, I think. His type of versatility, uh, versatility, um, and his speed and strength, that's going to be a, a plus for him. And I feel like Penn State is going to do everything they can from a weight room perspective and a strength perspective to get him ready to battle the trenches every, every day. Uh, I think it's something that he's going to attack and he's going to be really good at. What was it like watching your former teammates, Jair Brown, uh, play on the biggest stage? And uh, have you had a chance to meet with the 49ers formally or informally? Yeah, uh, it was amazing seeing what Jair was able to do this year. Um, I, it's nothing new to me. I've seen the type of guy that he was at Penn State, a um, tremendous leader, um, a guy that came in, put in the work every day, and he made plays in the biggest moments. So I knew when he was going to get that situation um, in the biggest game of his life, he, he made a play. And that's just something that I've seen since Penn State. Uh, I think he was leading the country in interceptions at one point. So. That's just a guy, I've seen it uh, multiple times, so it's, it's nothing new to me. What's... Um, Thanks, 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 Than